Laura uh, Giacconi says, uh, don't you need to check your privilege? Uh, that's really, she's got a paragraph there, but that's really it. I'm so glad we got this one. So let's talk about me checking my privilege, uh, my white skin privilege. My white skin privilege that opens so many doors for me and closes so many doors for other people. This uh, white skin privilege of mine that gives me all these unseen advantages and, and this institutionalized racism that may not even be operated by anybody. It's just built into the system and it's insurmountable. Um, if you believe this, drivel, then as I've thought about it more and more and more, I realize there is in fact a privilege. I, I, am, I, I, I am privileged. Uh, it's, it's a privilege that didn't, it wasn't caused by my white skin. It has nothing to do with my white skin, but it is a privilege. And my, and my privilege that I'm not going to check is pretty simple. It's my attitude. My privilege is my attitude. My privilege is that I was raised to believe that I could do anything I want to. And a black child who's raised to believe he can do anything he wants to, or a uh, woman, or a uh, homosexual, or anybody else that's born with that same privilege will in fact be able to go out and do pretty much anything they want to. And if I had been born with parents who had told me that uh, no matter what you do, you're going to fail, that other people are the cause of all your problems, that all of these people who've tried to block you and get in your way are the reason you're not succeeding, then that would be my um, anti-privilege. White skin privilege is what losers use to justify their own failures, period. Everybody understand? This whole idea of institutionalized racism is what losers use to justify their own failures to themselves. It's the philosophy of failure. It's the philosophy of failure. I didn't get all these advantages. Stop. Just stop right now. If you are actually trying to tell me that in 2013, a black child or a black teenager and a white teenager applying for jobs, applying for college benefits, applying for government grants, applying for anything. You're trying to tell me a white kid has an advantage over this kid? Really? Honestly? No. It's just not true. White privilege is an invention of lazy people to justify their failures. It's just that simple. And I know people don't like to hear it, but it's the truth. When you face the fact that your own success or failure is a product of your own actions, then you're free and you will succeed. And no one is going to tell me that a, that a black person with a working, with a hard work attitude, and, and that is their only attitude, is an attitude to hard work. That person's going to own companies in, in half the time it takes for white people to do it because of the fact that not only is there not a white skin privilege, there is a, and has been for 30, 40, 50 years now, an effort on the part of white America to bend over backwards to help, to help black people. Bend over backwards. Um, but no, no. We keep hearing it's about our, our institutionalized racism and our white skin privilege. I do have a privilege, and the privilege is up here. It's got nothing to do with my skin. The best way I ever heard this put was by a brain surgeon. Uh, extremely capable, extraordinarily wealthy individual uh, who, um, who really summed it up. And his name is Ben Carson. And Ben Carson said, yes, I have a couple of houses, and yes, I have some nice cars, and yes, I have a ton of money. And he said, you could take all of it away from me tomorrow. And I said, I'd have it all back again in a year because of what's up here. And I gasped. I didn't gasp because there's a black doctor saying something like that. I gasped. I just sat back and just went, wow, because that's as perfectly put as I've ever heard it before. And we all know he's right. I know he's right. You know he's right. The people who are, who are talking about white skin privilege know he's right. They all know he's right. Oh, well, he doesn't count because he's really brilliant, really smart, and so on. He came from poverty. And so did Herman Cain, and so did all these other people. They're not exceptions. They're not flukes. They're not like, they're not like fish that, that manage to escape this net. They're the few people that actually apply this when it is so much easier and so much more satisfying to blame your problems on somebody else. You know, there are people 
in uh, you don't see it so much anymore, but certainly in the in the years after the uh, Confederacy fell, there are a lot of people, a lot of white people sitting around saying this is all black people's fault. There are a lot of Irish that say it's all the British fault. There's a lot of Pakistanis who say it's all the Indians' fault. There's a lot of Chinese who say it's the Japanese fault. There's all of this all the time, and um, and this idea is convenient, and it's especially convenient nowadays for millennials who uh, who have no skills, no work ethic, no talent, no idea how to do anything. They got to have some explanation for why they're not going anywhere and living in their parents' garage. It's because of white skin privilege. Screw you. It's because of white skin privilege. And if you want to really go to the heart of this, I'll go even further. Sometimes you'll hear people say um, that, uh, well, you don't know what it's like to be um, followed around in a store because you're black. That's true, I don't. I don't know what that's like. Uh, but what you, um, uh, what you don't, uh, what you don't realize is that that is not white skin privilege. What that is, is that is the consequence of bad black behavior. It's just, face it, it's true that it would suck. It would suck if you were as most, as most black people are, perfectly law-abiding, honest citizens. But when you find that that, you know, 11% of the population commits 50, 60% of the crime and some insane amount of the robberies and shoplifting, and when your entire black culture is based on things like, you know, F the police and bitches ain't shit, and, and when you glorify it, when you glorify it and when the statistics are there and statistics are look statistics have like a word like oh it's just statistics no when the daily actions are that's what's happening if it were me i wouldn't be angry with white people i'd be angry with my own black people that's who i'd be angry with if it turned out that white conservatives were murdering people way out of proportion to our numbers and white conservatives were stealing right out of proportion to my numbers and all of a sudden I started getting followed around in a store because I was a white conservative, I wouldn't be angry at black America or women or liberals. I would be angry at other white conservatives for doing this and bringing this down on me because it's reasonable for people to assume that. That's what I would be doing. I would be, I would be ashamed of my people, I'd be ashamed of my peer group, and I would be really dedicated and motivated to do something about it. And everybody knows this is true. Everybody knows it's true, but nobody will say it. It's true. It's true. You are responsible for your own life. And ultimately, when you get down to this idea of white skin privilege, it flies against my entire idea of what people are. Because uh, if Mitt Romney had made this case, or if a Republican ever decides to want to try to win an election someday, maybe what you might want to say is um, what I've said when I'm doing this kind of campaigning thing, and that is that the Democrats and the progressives divide the country up into tribes and special interest groups and, and fill people full of rage and envy. My feeling is that a black business owner, a Hispanic business owner, a gay business owner, and a female business owner have a lot more in common as business owners than they do as blacks with other blacks, gays with other gays, women with other women, or Hispanics with other Hispanics. Our entire theory of government, our entire theory of life, our entire theory of morality is based on individual responsibility, individual responsibility. So when people say, well, what do you think of Black America, Bill? My response is, who are we talking about? Which person are we talking about? Do blacks commit a lot more crimes than proportional? Yeah, of course they do. Does that mean all blacks are criminals? No, and not only does it mean all blacks are criminals, it doesn't even mean most of them are criminals. Most of them aren't. And because of this nonsense of white skin privilege and all this crap, what really happens, the end result, put aside all the smoke and mirrors and, 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 and all the rest of it, the end result of this kind of thinking on the part of these progressive D-bags is that the honest, hard-working, law-abiding black people in this country, of which the great majority is, end up in ghettos with this outrageous crime rate, surrounded by children who are being shot on the street, and all of this is not, it's not, 
it's not inflicted on us, it's inflicted on them. The great irony of all this is, is that it's this progressive defending of these absolutely criminal and appalling behaviors that not only allows them to continue, but encourages them to continue. And who pays the price for this liberal douchebaggery? Black America does. Black America does. That's why South Central is such a mess. It's such a mess because people will not accept the fact that this is intolerable behavior and it needs to be stopped. If black America, black leadership, I should say, were to come out and say, we're not going to tolerate crime in our neighborhoods anymore, then you'd have a, a chance to solve this problem. But when they say, oh, no, this is all a result of white people's uh, white skin privilege, and you're basically saying, you're basically saying, it's okay. You know, black kid gets shot by a policeman. We'll call it uh, 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 rebellion against this uh, white skin privilege, but really it's just a pass to go and get some rims. It's really what it is. You got about a week, better hurry. So this is what it comes down to, folks. Once again, it's these liberal progressive policies that cause all this poison and pain. And when you get back down to it, you cannot escape the example of Booker T. Washington, one of the greatest Americans who ever lived, who demanded accountability and effort from black America. And not only did he get enough of it, he got more than he needed. He got more than the white community was delivering on average. That's what happens when you treat people like adults and individuals. I don't blame black America one bit for being disgusted or, or not willing to talk about Booker T. Washington because Booker T. Washington and the Tuskegee Institute and the Tuskegee Airmen and all that other stuff is the evidence that they're wrong. But just in the same way that wishful thinking is handy or magical thinking is handy, it's nice to think magically about problems. It's much easier to think magically about something than it is to go out and build a power plant or a bridge that requires work and effort and schooling and so on. So there you go. Uh, moving on.